Julie Ryan, noted psychic and medical intuitive, is ready to answer your personal questions, even those you never knew you could ask. For more than 20 years, as she's developed and refined her intuitive skills, Julie used her knowledge as a successful inventor and businesswoman to help others. Now, she wants to help you grow, heal, and get the answers you've been longing to hear. Do you have a question for someone who's transitioned? Do you have a medical issue? What about your pet's health or behavior? Perhaps you have a loved one who's close to death and you'd like to know what's happening. Are you on the path to fulfill your life's purpose? No matter where you are in the world, take a journey to the other side and ask Julie Ryan. Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Ask Julie Ryan Show. I'm Julie, your host, and I'm so delighted you could join us this week. My intention in doing this show is to provide information, insight, and comfort to people all around the world by helping to answer life's unanswerable questions. And we are doing something super special this week. We have Miss Pamela Bob with us. And you guys are going to love, love, love her. She is such an exceptional gal. And, uh, and I'm thrilled that she's taken the time to be with me this week on the show. Pamela is an award-winning Broadway and TV actor, singer, writer, producer, and creator of a new TV series called Living on a Prairie. On Broadway, she was seen in the 2015 Tony Award-nominated Best Play, Hand to God, as well as in lead roles in the 2014 Tony Award winner for Best Musical, A Gentleman's Guide to Love and Murder. Pamela also starred in and won awards for several off-Broadway productions and received the Talkin' Broadway Best Actress Award for her work in People Like Us. She received awards for Best Actress for productions of George Bernard Shaw's Heartbreak House, as well as her riveting portrayal of June Carter Cash in Wildwood Flowers, the June Carter Cash story. In addition, Pamela has extensive commercial work with ads for Verizon, Coca-Cola, and Panasonic. Now, Pamela, you guys, has some serious chops when it comes to her education. She trained at the Oxford School of Drama in the UK, which, by the way, is one of the top five acting schools in the world. She has a BFA from the internationally renowned University of Cincinnati College Conservatory of Music and has participated in several well-known workshops with legendary acting teachers. Pamela lives in New York City with her husband and two small children. My God, what an overachiever, girl. Holy <laughs> moly. Welcome to the show. Hello. Thank you. That is so bizarre having my life read out to me that way <laughs> because I feel like it's just me. Nothing, nothing really special. Nothing too special. <laughs> right. Oh, heavens. But that sounded quite impressive. <laughs> yeah, you're impressed yourself with your life, right? <laughs> I love it. I love it. Well, thanks for taking the time out of your oh, I'm crazy so schedule to be with us. And, and I know my listeners are going to just absolutely love you like I do. So, all right, let's get going. My, my, what I want to know is, it seems <laughs> to me like you're the epitome of the adage, dreams really do come true. Yikes. So tell us about your childhood and when you realized you wanted to be on Broadway. Oh, um, my childhood was lovely. Um, grew up uh, in New Jersey, about two miles outside of New York City. So we had the best of both worlds. We had sort of a house and a car, um, but also New York City access to everything. Right. And um, I, I really, I came out of the womb knowing exactly what my life's purpose was. I, I knew I wanted to be an actor from as long as I could remember. Um, and also, I'm fortunate because I was surrounded by the arts of a very artistic family. My mother's an actor. My father's a writer. My sister's a pianist. Um, my grandmother was a pianist. I have visual artists. I have dancers in my family. So I was brought up not thinking that this was a crazy thing to be mm -hmm. uh, and a very possible thing to be. It was never a, a question for anyone. Um, so, yeah, I, I really feel like this is why I'm here on the planet for sure. Well, and your type of acting though is just at the top of the actor Thanks. food chain because <laughs> really, and, it, and not just acting as far as dramatic acting, 
you sing and dance and do musicals and do all that <laughs> other jazz, which is really at the top of the food chain in my mind. And every actor that I've ever heard interviewed over the years, who's a movie actor or a TV actor always says, my, my dream is to be on Broadway. Yeah. And you went straight to Broadway. Well, I, I mean, straight in a sense that it took about 13 years after I graduated college to get to Broadway. So, but, so in, in that sense, it felt like it took forever to get there, mm -hmm. especially compared with um, a lot of other people that I graduated with who, you know, all at the top of their game, we're talking about the best kids in the country. And a lot of them go straight to Broadway, which mm -hmm. is not, by the way, just so your viewer, uh, your, your listeners know, that is not normal. <laughs> I would it is think. much more normal to, you know, pay your dues and have your hard knocks and, and, make it there as best you can. Mm -hmm. um, so it did. I, and I, I was working, I, I was always working as an actor. I was working regionally and off Broadway, but the Broadway sort of piece of the puzzle always seemed to elude me um, until it finally happened, uh, which was really, um, I sort of considered it a small miracle because there, there is something where you get to a certain age or you've been in the business a really long time and you haven't gotten the Broadway credit yet. Um, you wonder if the industry looks at you and says, why don't they have a Broadway credit yet? <laughs> it's, oh. a really, it's a really convoluted industry. It, it's, it's, it's really... Um, it's just a crazy business, point blank. It's just a crazy, crazy business. So sometimes it works against you taking a really long time to get to Broadway because you might be put with the stigma of, well, they don't have a Broadway credit. Mm -hmm. um, but I really lucked out. And, and also, after 13, 15 years, I'd, I already had in the industry, you know, I had made my connections. I had paid my dues. I knew you know and had worked with the choreographer before the casting people knew my work they had recognized me so everything that I had been building finally all linked up and and that magical moment of you just booked this show happened mm -hmm. which the was stars crazy aligned the stars yeah. aligned for you yeah interestingly enough I went into that audition but and this was a gentleman's guide to love and murder was my Broadway debut I went into that audition having just finished a three month chakra intensive workshop. Interesting. <laughs> Where one of the main things I was working on um, was detaching myself from the Broadway outcome. Mm -hmm. So when I walked into the audition, I really, really had the intention of, I'm just gonna have fun with this and it doesn't matter if I book it or not. And of course, that's when it happened. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, you always hear about people that want to have a relationship in their life and their women, especially, and they're like, oh yeah. my God, I'm in my yeah. mid-30s and I don't have a man in my life, but I want to get totally. married and have a family and all of that. And they just finally say, okay, whatever. And then they meet them. Totally yeah, and it, it happens all the time. I mean, it happens. I mean, a lot of women get pregnant too. Have been trying right. and trying and trying, and then when finally they say, "Okay, I'm done. Where this isn't going to happen," boom, it happens. Right. And it is so fascinating that when you get rid of that, surrender that energy, um, what you attract is what you've been working so hard for. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Exactly. <laughs> so the letting it go is really um, key to a lot of stuff. It's such a weird and fun and crazy law. Well, and it's about accepting where you are and being okay with it. That's and right. That's, that's when the magic happens, I think, yeah. in all of those different instances. So what, what drove you towards this vision? And did you have a game plan as a kid? Did, you, did it unfold for you as you went along? How did you... How did you do this? Because to be in a musical on Broadway, like I said before, you don't have to just be a dramatic actor. You got to work at being an amazing dancer and an amazing singer and an yeah. amazing actress and all the other stuff that goes around all of that. And I, I'm always amazed at um, actors like you who are in musicals. I think, how in the heck do you do this just from a physical standpoint? How does your voice hold out? What do you do? Seven or eight shows a week? Eight, eight shows a week. And I will be brutally honest about that. It 
is hard. I there bet. is nothing easy about it. I mean, it's like being a, an Olympic athlete. It is just it, it, it can be seriously brutal too. I mean, it, it, just preserving your voice alone is so difficult. Mm -hmm. um, and oftentimes you have to be on vocal rest, meaning not speaking at all until you get to the theater and warm up and do the show and then shut it up after you're done. Otherwise you're not going to make it. Even just staying healthy mm -hmm. is really difficult, especially when you're living virtually in a theater, which is its own little Petri dish. Mm -hmm. And when one person gets sick, everybody gets sick. Or, you know, if you have to kiss someone on stage who has a terrible cold, you're going to get that cold. Right. Um, it's really difficult. Uh, uh, it's, it's the hardest work out there. It, it truly is. It's funny, I had a friend say to me the other day, she was being interviewed and the person interviewing her said, what's the one thing about this business that you want to tell people that they don't know about it? And she said, it is not glamorous. Mm -hmm. And that is the truth. Mm -hmm. You see these award shows, you see, you know, the, the, the beauty and the fashion and you see the you know, the Broadway lights. And, and again, there's nothing wrong with that. It's, it's all very fabulous, except it is hard work and it's a, it, it, it's your job. Um, and oftentimes when you go to these parties or the, uh, these award ceremonies, you're, you're doing your job. You're, it's different than just a, a viewer at home watching it and thinking, oh, this is so glamorous. Well, when you've done eight shows a week, Let's talk about the Tony Awards, right? The Tony Awards, what people don't know about that is that for six weeks, from the time the nomination comes out to the award ceremony, you're on a press junket. You're on a publicity tour, right? So you're being interviewed. You're doing the early morning talk shows. You're performing out in the cold uh, in front of you know the Today Show at 7 a.m. And then you also have eight shows a week on top of that. Mm -hmm. The day of the Tony Awards, <laughs> this is crazy. The day of the Tony Awards, you've already done an eight show week, right? It's Sunday at four in the morning, you have to wake up because you have a rehearsal at Radio City Music Hall that starts at five or six in the morning. You then have to go to your theater and do a matinee that day. Then after the show is over, you have roughly maybe a half an hour after the show ends from curtain down to the time you have to leave for the Tony Awards. You roughly have about a half an hour to get your hair done, to get the makeup done, to get the dress on and hopefully eat something before you're rushed off to the Tonys. And then sometimes when you're at the Tonys, if you're uh, you know, you know, an ensemble and you're performing a piece, you know, you're, you're shuttled in a bus, you wait on a bus, <laughs> you come out, you perform, you get back on the bus. I mean, there really is nothing glamorous about it. It's hard and you're tired and you're just hoping your voice is going to hold out for the telecast. It's really crazy. So these are the things people don't see. Oh, the Tony Award Show is always the best on TV every year. I mean, <laughs> I mean hands I down, look it's forward to it. fabulous. It's yeah. fabulous. But so having said all that, what drives people, what drove you knowing mm -hmm. that and experiencing that over the years to continue to want to be in that business? Is it something that you think is a uh, like your spirit's goal? Is it that you're following your intuition and you're being guided to do that, knowing and to your point, being like an athlete, what yeah. drives somebody to do that kind of a strenuous job? And, and where does that come from? And tell us about that. Well, I mean, I'll speak for myself personally, and I think this is true of most performers. Um, I do feel like it is an absolute calling. It's a passion that is unexplainable. Um, it's a drive that is unexplainable. Um, and, and I'll put, I'll put it plainly. If there was something else I could do that I felt as much joy and pleasure and a connection with source or God or the universe or whatever you want to call it, that was easier than this. <laughs> 
I would do it in a heartbeat. The fact is from a very small age, I knew that my connection with God was through this. Whatever energy was flowing through me, whatever, uh, and sometimes I do feel like I'm a channel uh, because I do feel oftentimes that I, I do leave the building and something else comes through me that is unexplainable, uh, that I, I don't really have control of. It, it, it controls me. Um, it, what's weird is that when I was doing that June Carter cast show, Half of the time I would, I would finish that show and not know what happened because I literally felt like something was being channeled through me. Um, hopefully it I was just June. Got, I just got <laughs> goosebumps on that. My, yeah. legs, my legs went, and everybody, yeah. everybody listening knows that's one of the validations when something is said or an idea is thought, that's validation. That's absolutely, yeah. And before every that. show, before every show, I had a sense of dread. I have a sense of dread, like, how am I going to do this again tonight? I don't know if I can do this. I don't know. And then inevitably something would take over and it would be done. And I'd say, I don't know what just happened. I don't know how I just did that. Um, but something, something took over. And again, if there was anything else in my life that even came close to that kind of sensation, <laughs> I would do it. <laughs> but, um, you know, there's also a difference between... Uh, wanting to be in the spotlight and wanting to be a channel for this energy. And I feel like, uh, listen, it feels great to get applause. It feels fantastic to feel those lights on you and know that people are, the energy that you feel from a live audience is unlike anything ever. Uh, and it's, it's intoxicating. Um, but... I feel like if it was my ego that was in it, I wouldn't have lasted a, a second because your ego is going to get crushed every single time. And if you're just wanting the attention, this is not, this is not going to have longevity. So I feel like my intentions of why my soul feels that I need to be doing this is because I feel like I have a greater purpose with it. Um, and, and I mean, I don't know if that sounds too lofty, but that's just my experience with it for sure. Greater purpose to, to provide entertainment for people or what, to speak about that for a minute. Yeah. I mean, that's the question, right? Is this for providing pleasure to others or is this to feel good and connected for myself? And I think it's a combination of, of the two. I agree. Um, and I think it's also... Um, what you want to put out into the world and what projects you want to put out into the world and what message you want to put out into the world. Mm -hmm. Oftentimes, I mean, most of the time as an actor, you get hired for a job, right? You, you, you haven't written it yourself. You're not directing it. You're mm -hmm. not producing it. So sometimes, and I've been very lucky with my career, I really, I would say 99% of everything that I've done have been shows or projects that I really loved that I thoroughly believed in. So I never felt like I was like just sort of selling myself out for a, for a paycheck <laughs> for it just to be in a show. Um, but it, it's, um, it, it's what you want to want to put out into the world as well and what you want to do and what you don't want to do with this quote unquote gift that, that you have. Wow. I, I love the bit about channeling uh, um, June Carter Cash. I think I, I saw an ad for some actor's workshop and Helen Mirren was yes, on the yes. ad. Have you seen that ad? I've seen that too. And yes. she said, you get into costume and you're on set and all of a sudden it's like it's an out of body experience and you're assuming another role and it just flows through you and i think that's exactly what you were just talking about that's it and that's the ultimate goal that is that is the ultimate goal of any actors and listen sometimes you don't get there but mm -hmm. when you do mm -hmm. there is just nothing like it there's yeah. just nothing like it i bet well from an energetic standpoint, you're, en you're vibrating at such a high level when you're doing that. And yeah. that's why it feels so good because it's what your spirit knows because that's how your spirit vibrates. That's what I do when I connect with people <clears throat> is I 
raise my vibrate my vibrational level to the level of spirit so I can connect. You're swimming in that when you're in those roles and you're feeling that feeling of, of her coming through you and you, yeah. and, and it doesn't just have to be with dead people. Right. Sure. 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 Although you want to hear a really funny something. Yeah. And I, I, I don't know why I have this. <laughs> I say my only real psychic ability is that I sometimes often tap into celebrities and random celebrities. Mm -hmm. And I don't know why that's the only uh, like palpable psychic thing <laughs> I know that I have. But oftentimes I'll be like, um, for example, you know, a couple years ago I was thinking, what? Jan Hooks. You remember Jan Hooks from Saturday Night Live? Yes. Who I, and I love her, but the thought just burned into my brain. And all day I was going, Jan Hooks. Where's Jen Hooks? Jen Hooks is amazing. What, what is she doing? What is she up to? Why haven't I seen her? Why hasn't she been in any project? Jen Hooks, Jen Hooks. Couldn't get her out of my brain. And the next morning they had announced that she had passed away. There you go. What? Why? Why did I tap into that energy? I don't know. But I have a weird celebrity energy thing happening. <laughs> it's because you are a celebrity. So uh, you're in well. the mix. You're in the mix. So, all right. So, did you, you already mentioned that you basically had an inner knowing that you would mm -hmm. succeed in that business, but I have to think that you experienced some type of fear oh, as you went oh. through this. And, and what came to mind as far as fear in your industry was the, um, you know, the late great composer Marvin Hamlish, who's one of my all time fav favorites, mm -hmm. talks about in his song, I hope I get it from a chorus line. Yes. And now feel free to sing us a couple of bars of that. God, I hope I get who, it. Who are I hope familiar. I get it. <laughs> yeah, keep going. How many people does he need? Yeah, the, 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 the famous chorus line. Yes. Right, um, right. And, and did you experience that? I can't imagine you Every didn't... single day to this day. Okay. Even when you're quote unquote successful, even when you're in a hit Broadway show, you still have that sense of, well, this is going to end and what's going to, what am I going to do next? What's going to happen next? Uh, the, 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 the reality is your show is going to end one day and you will be unemployed again. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and there really is no guarantee of what the next thing is going to be. Mm -hmm. And that's the leap of faith that, that you must have in order to endure is knowing that something else is going to come, but you don't have that job security at all. Mm -hmm. um, yes. I mean, every, every, every day. And I will say I'm at a much better place now. Listen, I've been doing it for 20 years now. So uh, I would hope I'd be at a better place of, of um, not just patience, but understanding and not comparing myself to other people's paths and journeys because we all have our individual paths and journeys and my path is nothing close to someone else's and who might be in the exact same industry um but yes i mean it is full of heartbreak you for every you know 100 things that you audition for you might get one you might mm -hmm. i mean it's a world full of no's um and the fact is it has nothing to do with talent either. You could be the most talented person in the room, if not in the world, and you still won't get the job because you're two inches too small or because the director wants his wife's cousin to do it <laughs> or because the producer, you, you know, d doesn't want a redhead or because it, it, it is so out of your control and the thing, if, if you want to be in this business, is to really have to learn how to be okay with all of that and not let your ego define who you are, you know. I think for a long time, I, I felt validated if I booked that job or I'm in this particular show, not that show, or I'm working in New York, not in a regional theater in... Kansas City somewhere because it made me feel like oh no I'm valid now and the fact is that's what you like to call fake news <laughs> right. it's false all fake belief. news it's, false it's a false belief right and also the fact is I know 
so many ridiculously brilliantly talented people that I have worked with, directors, actors, singers, who have never gotten their Broadway credits. And it has nothing to do with their worth or their value or if they're good enough or not good enough. That is also a false truth um, saying that, well, if they have done Broadway, that means they're the best of the best. There are a lot of best of the best that just don't get their break for whatever reason it is. Interesting. Well, do you have some kind of a practice that, that we would, what we would call to be a spiritual practice to help keep you calm and centered and focused when we, when we all have those situations, whether it's our careers or our families or we're, we're stuck in line at the airport and they've closed down the airport because of weather and you got to be someplace. I mean, whatever. Is there something that you do that's a technique or a practice that you can share with us about how, how do you survive in this? Sure. Um, well, I'll preface this by saying I wish I had had a spiritual practice for the first 15 years of my career <laughs> because I was really just just going on, um, I don't know, just, just, I guess, ego for sure. But I was just doing what I was supposed to be doing because that's what everyone was telling me I was supposed to do. And this is the road I have to be. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to work and work and work and work to make this happen. And the fact is, I did work and work and work and work, and it did happen, but it wasn't as satisfying of an experience once I got there. And I think it wasn't satisfying because I had worked so hard that my expectations were totally not what the reality of of what it actually is once I, once I quote unquote made it you know, to Broadway. Um, so I will say, I would say the past four or five years, well, four, yeah, three or four years um, is when I really started implementing a, a specific uh, and dedicated spiritual practice. And that is because of many reasons. Um, I had a sort of very huge spiritual awakening after these Broadway shows ended uh, because uh, I was so run down by them, quite frankly. And let me also preface this by saying they were wonderful shows. There was amazing things I got out of them. I am eternally grateful. However, the downside is I was run down. My spirit had been pretty crushed for a while. I was physically ill. I, I had gotten about five autoimmune disorders because I felt... Um, emotionally unsatisfied. Uh, and I was ill. I mean, I was physically ill, emotionally ill, spiritually ill. And I was in really critical condition. And it wasn't until I sought, uh, I found my homeopath and my acupuncturist and started that alternative work was when I, my body was able to heal itself and really understand the, the body, mind, spirit connection, and that that is not just a philosophy, it's actual fact, it's actual science. And once I, uh, because of my health crisis, I, I was always seeking, always, always seeking and just sort of hadn't found that thing yet that was going to make me feel like, ah, oh, that's the key, until my health crisis. And once that opened up that channel, poof, Pandora's box, I mean, it was it game on and my body re repaired itself. In fact, I'm the healthiest I've ever been in my life because I, I was a pretty sick kid as well. Um, not only am I physically healthy, I'm emotionally healthy, I'm spiritually healthy. And that is because I know what I want. I know what to say no to. Saying no is a big thing for me right now. Um, and I know what my, my purpose is. So uh, to get back to your question, my spiritual practice, I'm a big um, a listener of Abraham Hicks. So the law of attraction, all of that stuff has really, really changed my life in a very dramatic way. Mm -hmm. um, meditation, I try to meditate as, as 
often as I can. It is difficult with a one-year-old and a nine-year-old <laughs> to wake up in the morning and have my 15 or 20 minutes of meditation. That doesn't really happen anymore. <laughs> Um, but when I was pregnant, it did all the time uh, until the baby came and that disrupted that. But um, I do try to find uh, any moment I can to, even if it's five minutes of just getting still and tapping into myself, because I, the big lesson that I have learned and what I live by now is that your gut never, never, ever, ever lies, ever. And I promised myself after I was done with my Broadway shows and I, I was in sort of this crisis that I was now from now on going to live by my gut. And even if that meant on paper, things that looked really great, but my gut was telling me, ah, that doesn't feel right. I was going to say no. And that has opened up a magical world for me <laughs> of going in a place that, and in a direction that my life has led now that I could have never dreamt of before, where I'm much happier, much more fulfilled, much more creatively fulfilled. Um, and I feel like uh, that has been my number one spiritual practice. Always listen to your gut. All of the answers are inside. We just have to get still and listen to what our body already knows we need to do. Mm -hmm. Can you talk a little bit about the feelings on the continuum that you've experienced from seeing your name on the marquee of the theater when you were starring in your first show? Yeah. I, mean, I can't even imagine what that <laughs> felt like. I'll tell you a quick story about mine after you talk about yours. <laughs> Not that I was on a marquee, but I had something happen to me that can only be remotely equivalent to what that must have felt like. So how did you feel at that moment? And how does it relate to how you feel today? After saying what you just said about mm -hmm. feeling like you're calmer and more focused and all of that, explain that, is there a difference? Is it just a, like a little bit of a tweak? Is it a nuance? Is it a dramatic difference? Mm -hmm. Talk just a little bit about that. You know, what's interesting is that seeing my name up on a Broadway marquee or on an original cast recording, you know, that was always the dream, always the dream since childhood. And as, as thrilling initially as that is, I have to say that, and I don't know whether this is because I'm just a humble person, and I, I do think I'm a pretty humble person. To me, it's always been about the work um, not about the spotlight being on me. Don't get me wrong. I want to be seen. I want to be recognized. Um, but that sort of, I guess what I, what I was saying before, things aren't as glamorous as people think it is. That sort of fades. And I, I have to say that oftentimes someone will have to remind me I start on Broadway <laughs> because I don't know if I downplay it or I just don't, I don't know what it is about me that feels like it's not that big of a deal when it is a big deal. And I, well, is, I it, is it a matter of been there, done that on to the next adventure? I think it's because, because the experience of doing it, wasn't what I thought it was going to be that after the fact that feeling of oh, I start on Broadway isn't really that strong um, because the reality of it is it was hard work it was oftentimes a toxic environment it was oftentimes um an awesome environment and, and got tons of, of brilliant experiences out of it, but it's a mixed bag as anything is. Mm -hmm. So um, I don't know. I think maybe it's because of that. Maybe, and also maybe cause I'm, I don't, I don't know, Julie, I can't explain it to you. I think the difference now is um, 
I just think I'm in a, a much better place of enjoying the ride instead of only focusing on the destination. Whereas before I was so focused on getting there, getting there, getting there. And then I got there and it wasn't what I thought it was going to be. <laughs> well, it, in I one sense it was. And on the other sense, it, there was a whole other side of it that I was surprised by. Right. Whereas and now I I'm enjoying just the process of where I am and seeing where it will lead to. Exactly. And it's the adventure of the journey. And then you get there and then you reinvent something else that's your next adventure. And when right. we're done doing that, then we die because right. then it's over. <laughs> right. we're, I believe we're here as spiritual beings to co-create with God, whatever that creation is. And my moment in lights was at the age of 30, I, at the age of 29, I had licensed one of my inventions to the largest orthopedic manufacturer in the world, largest global manufacturer. I mean, this company today, I don't even know how many billions of wow. dollars their sales are, hundreds of billions. And I had licensed my device to them, and I went to the American Academy of Orthopedic Surgeons conference in San Francisco in 1990. And I was 30 in, you know, at this point. And I, and I got up there. There was like 15,000 people attend this conference from wow. all over the world. And there's maybe, I don't know, seven or 8,000 surgeons. And so I walked in the Moscone Convention Center in downtown San Francisco. And as soon as I walked in the door, there was this huge banner. It was the first thing everybody saw when they walked in the door that said, introducing the Zimmer auto transfusion device. That was my wow. invention that I had licensed to them. And I remember standing in that doorway and bursting into tears and thinking, oh my God, you know, all the stuff that I've been through, including a, a trial for 10 days in Boston, suing a huge multi-billion dollar international company for breach of contract, and I won, and, you know, all this other stuff in the development and like I said, it doesn't compare to having your name no, and lights on Broadway, no, but, it does, but it, it does compare because you you went through the the trials and tribulations to get there. And right. the, the the wonderful thing about that story is you were able in that moment to receive it. Oh, it was amazing. And then I was gonna go into the Zimmer booth, which probably had a hundred people working in it. I mean, it was wow. massive, double-decker, like at the TV, that big TV show conference that we've heard about in Vegas every year. Yeah. Like the broadcasters conference or something where they have, like the Zimmer booth takes, took six 18 wheelers to bring in the booth and set it up. It was, it's that big. And I thought, Ryan, you need to go in the ladies room and fix yourself up before you go meet with these people because you look like a wreck. And I stood there and <laughs> burst into tears but it was just so remarkable and one of certainly one of the highlights of my career in that industry so I can relate a little bit to what you're saying but see I think uh, I think with what I'm doing now and the project that I'm working on now which is this TV show I think when that moment comes for me with this show I will be able to receive it because the path has been so starkly different than the path I was on before. Right. And everything unfolds perfectly. And, that's, and that is a great segue because I, one of my uh, questions that I had put together for you is, tell us about this living on a prairie TV I will. show. <laughs> and, then, and then what roles are you assuming? And along those lines, we hear about these showrunners like, Shonda Rhimes and David E. Mm -hmm. Kelly and Christopher Lloyd and J.J. Abrams and others, mostly male. Mm -hmm. And so what exactly does a showrunner do? And do you believe your Broadway experience is going to help you survive and thrive in that super competitive industry? So that's, Interesting. About, that's about six questions all in <laughs> one. So first, tell us about the show. And then let's talk about how, well, I'll tell how you your experiences have prepared you for what's coming. Well, I'll tell I'll tell you about the inception of the show because I think that's the really interesting part. Which is, uh, like I said, I'd finished these two Broadway runs. I'd I'd sort of was in a 
okay, let's rest and regroup phase. And um, long story short, I wasn't allowed, to, a casting director refused to see me for a new Broadway show that was coming in that a part in it was seemingly perfect for me. And this casting director just didn't like me for one reason or another. And, and, and that's what I'm saying about this business. You, you really don't have much control. Mm -hmm. And I just went, right, I'm, I'm done fighting. I'm done fighting for this. Uh, and then not only am I done fighting to, to be seen when, you know, hey, I do have the credits. Hey, I have paid my dues. Hey, I, everything on paper should have led me in the room. But this person with power just sort of did it, wasn't feeling me. And uh, so two things happened, which was I, I surrendered and when I can't, I can't fight people with power who have control over me like this anymore. It's exhausting and I'm tired. And I didn't, I'm whispering this as if it's a big secret. I didn't really want to do that show anyway. <laughs> so it was this realization of there's something else I'm supposed to be doing. That's not this. This show would have been another credit. It would have been another paycheck, but it wouldn't have led me to where I knew I needed to go. And so once I gate sort of surrendered that, I was putting my son to sleep and, you know, he had already fallen asleep. I was lying in bed with him. He had already fallen asleep. And, you know, when you get into that sort of meditative, lucid, you're not awake, but you're not asleep place. And this idea came to me, which is what my series is now about. And the idea, it was unlike any experience I've ever experienced in my life, which was it felt like an electrical bolt shot through my body. I literally sat up in the bed and when this is it, this is it. I've got to do this. I've got to do this. Um, and I have never written, produced, shot television. Uh, certainly was just planning on using an iPhone and a few friends and just maybe putting a little something together just because it felt fun. It felt good. It made my spirit feel good. Long story short, as soon as I said the idea out loud, within six months, everything had manifested. So as soon as I announced out loud, hey, there's this idea of this show I want to do, I found my, my investor came to me. My production company came to me. My director came to me. My cast came to me. The writing poured out of me. Again, that sort of channeling thing where it just poured out of me. Everything manifested. I didn't have to work for it at all. It was easy. Um, and I'm knocking on wood right now. Um, and we filmed it. It's brilliant. Uh, I'm so proud of it. It's the most creatively fulfilled I've ever felt in my life. And also while doing it, while filming it, it was crystal clear to me, another lightning bolt of, oh, this is what I'm supposed to be doing with my life. This all leads up to this. Um, even my, my temperament as an actor, you know, I'm the actor in the room who watches every rehearsal. It kills me if something isn't as good as I know it can be. It kills me not having a say <laughs> in either the writing or the directing or the casting. Um, you know, I'm, I'm the actor in the back of the room sort of rocking back and forth because I want to get my hands in there. I want to get dirty. And this was a culmination of what to me oftentimes was a negative personality trait <laughs> into, oh no, this is a very, very positive personality trait. And I'm a boss, a great lady boss. And this is what I am supposed to be doing. So Long story short, the show is called Living on a Prairie. We've won several, several film festivals. We were chosen by Tribeca TV Festival, one of only five independent TV shows to be premiered there. That was last year. Um, and it's about a woman in search of meaning in her life uh, and who, who 
uh, is not living her real authentic life and instead lives vicariously through the 1970s television NBC hit show, Little House on the Prairie, <laughs> which is incredibly silly. Um, but it really, uh, so the good news is if you're a Little House on the Prairie fan, you're going to get a huge kick out of it because it's a giant wink and nod to all things Little House on the Prairie. If you've never seen Little House on the Prairie and know nothing about it, you're still going to love the show because it's not about that. It's about this woman's journey and her struggle. And uh, anyone can relate to that. And, you know, quite frankly, it's about obsession and what happens when you're a, a fan of something that's not real, that you could replace it with Star Wars or Game of Thrones or, you know, any other classic culty thing. It's just, you know, a little off the prairie isn't the coolest of shows. <laughs> well, and you've done a brilliant job. I've seen, Thanks. I've seen the, the, some of the episodes that you've put, you know, which are fabulous. And you've done a brilliant job of combining the struggle that this woman is going through and, and her obsession with Little House on the Prairie in, <laughs> in a way that teaches, but it's hilarious. Yeah, it's, it's really, like, it's a it's, dark comedy for it's sure. It's like Seinfeld with Little House on the Prairie <laughs> thrown in. And it's just a riot. It's Thank so you. much fun. And you are so terrific at it. Thank I remember you. when I was watching it, so there were some parts that I saw that <laughs> I just burst out laughing. <laughs> and then I was thinking about it later and I was still laughing later in the day <laughs> after I'd seen it. So, so it's just, I'm really proud of it. Um, I'm really excited about the possibilities going forward with it. I, know exactly what I want to do to develop it into a half hour TV show. Um, and so, yeah, I'm just finishing up now the packaging of it to start shopping it to networks and, and uh, hopefully really soon, hopefully by the end of the year. How exciting is that? And, it's truly exciting. And, and again, that's, that's in the entertainment industry, but it's a different niche. So you're having to figure this out and, and get guidance and totally learn. learn. How do you shop? a pilot to the TV networks and the streamers? Well, How that's a that great work? question. <laughs> are the people, you know, I always say the people we need to show up, show up right when we need them. That's right. It, it sounds like you've been experiencing that in I this have new project. The entire experience of this new project has been nothing short of magical. Um, like I said, everything that I've needed has come to me. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, and I, when I say magically, I, I literally mean magically. Um, uh, I, I have a producing partner, um, in LA who is just wonderful. And, and he's the guy that, that knows the industry inside and out. He's had several successful TV shows and movies and, uh, he's, he's been doing it for a long time. And I paired up with him, again, the, just magical. Uh, once I started winning these film festivals, I started posting on social media trailers for the series. Mm -hmm. And within an hour after I first posted these trailers, I got all of these emails from people saying, oh my gosh, this looks amazing. I want to send it to so-and-so and so-and-so. And I know so-and-so who might want to be interested in blah, blah, blah. And one person in particular... Um, hooked me up with uh, uh, Mark, my, who is now my producing partner, who I had been asking the universe, right? Because I had gotten to the step. We had filmed the show. We had won these festivals. We had been chosen for Tribeca. And I have no idea what I'm doing now. <laughs> I've never done this before. I, right. I don't know how it works. Um, and actually, I think me being green in that respect has helped me quite a lot because I'm not jaded and I do feel like, well, sure, it can happen. Why, why wouldn't it happen? If it, if it can happen to that person, why can't it happen to me? And not Be stuck on a certain way that it has to happen. That's right. Totally out of the box and totally right. open. Yeah. Um, and so because of me posting on social media, I was hooked up with Mark. 
And I'd been asking the universe for a partner who would not only be a mentor, but a real equal, but who would also respect and honor my artistic vision um, and my creativity, but would help me, right. would help me. And it seems that that is exactly who appeared in my life. And so he's been mentoring me for, for a long time now and we're, and guiding me along. And, and so hopefully we're, we're at the precipice of something hopefully really great. It's been an awesome adventure. It's been the best adventure of my life besides my children. <laughs> it's just been, uh, and again, on, on paper, or if I say it out loud to a lot of people, it sounds crazy. What I'm doing sounds impossible or sounds crazy or sounds like a pipe dream. Um, and for me, I feel like, no, 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 this is, I've been led to this. Mm -hmm. This isn't just, um, if I didn't feel like I had been led to this, if I didn't feel like there was a great greater than me energy that has been behind this from the very inception, that experience that I had putting my son to bed with that lightning bolt shooting through my body. If I hadn't have experienced that, I, this thing wouldn't, I wouldn't have lasted this long. But because of all of that and the way everything has manifested, it has only strengthened my belief that something energetically is going on and all I need to do is get out of my own way. Well, go with the flow. You're in and the flow. And go with the flow. That's yeah, right. you're in the flow. You're, and you're following your guidance and you're getting inspiration. That's right. And, and, my, and my gut is leading the way this whole that's right. time. And you know that you only follow inspiration and act on inspiration when you're in a positive frame of mind. Because when we're in a negative frame of mind, we just stay on the hamster wheel of negativity. And you're, right. you're living it, girl. You're yeah. Yeah. Okay, we've got a few minutes left. So I have one more question for you. But before we get to that, in closing, how do people find out more about you? How do they find you? How, how do they see the, the living on a prairie? Sure, sure. Um, well, the episodes are not available. But if you want to contact me and want to see it, I will certainly send it over your way. So my website is uh, PamelaBob.com. My last name is Bob, B-O-B. -B. Uh, PamelaBob.com. You can find me on Instagram at the ThePamelaBob. Um, you can see the trailers on either site. There's also a, just a site for um, Living on a Prairie, which is LivingOnAPrairieTV.com. And it's Live in without the G. Well, living so, on the prairie dot TV so dot com. People can see the trailers there. Absolutely. Yes, one hundred percent. Yeah. And, and if you need to contact me, you can contact me via any of those sites. Right. So anybody listening that that knows of somebody or has something that they want to add to help Pamela with this, by all means, contact her, contact me, I'll forward it to her. Oh, and, um, and if and I can whatever. say one thing, I do have original cast members of Little House on the Prairie in the show itself. So if anyone's a Prairie fan, you're going to like that. It's going to be fun for you. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. All right. So in closing, my last question for you is, how do you make time for your family? Is there really such a thing as a work-life balance, especially for women? How do you how do, yeah. you do that? What do, what do you, what has been your methodology or what have you developed over the years so that you've got two little kids and a husband? Yeah. I mean, yeah. how do you balance all of this stuff or is it even possible? Well, the work-life balance is the number one key, I think, for anybody, especially women. I mean, especially in this business for women. You know, it's really interesting. There are a lot of um, couples who have children who are in this business, both the, the husband and the wife, both in the industry, but the husband will go off and do a national tour. He'll go off and do a regional theater production. He'll do, you know, go off and do whatever. And when the woman does that, um, it's much more of a stigma of, of why are, you're often not taking care, you're not with your children right now. So there, there's this real stigma about the woman needing to be home with the kids, but the man can go off and it's fine. Um, and I will say personally for me, 
I don't want to leave my kids out of town. And of course, if I had to, if I had to make that money, if I had to get that health insurance and this is the only way I, I could do it, of course, you do what you have to do to support your family, even if that means being away for a while. So there's no judgment about it. Um, but I will say the Broadway schedule is really, really rigorous and it does take you away from your home and your family for, for quite a long time. And I think, uh, I was fortunate that I had my little girl a year and a half ago and I, for the first time decided that I was going to take a break from really auditioning, from really doing theater because I, at that point, uh, was fortunate enough to have checked off the boxes of, right, I did my Broadway show, I did a Broadway show, I did the off-Broadway stuff. And so I felt satisfied enough in my own accomplishments that I could take a break from it to be home with my family. And I it's the best decision I ever made. Um, but not everyone has the luxury to do that. You know, it, it, it's, it's a job. It's a job. And if you have to pay your rent or if you have to support a family, you, you do what you have to do. But I will say, when I am out of balance and I'll catch myself, uh, that's when everything goes awry both with your family life, my relationship with my husband, uh, my relationship with my own career, uh, that's when everything goes really wonky. So you were talking about spiritual practice. So that is always a, a forefront in my mind, which is I've got to make sure I stay balanced because I know when I'm not, things do not go well. Family life isn't as nice. My husband doesn't like me as much. <laughs> or I don't like my husband as much. There you go. There you go. Yeah. Um, and when I rebalance myself, everything works out. And that's the key is knowing that, you know, the, the universe really does have your back. And it's our job to tap into our inner selves say, what's going on? How am I actually feeling? What do I actually want? What do I actually need? And, and follow that gut. And it's, it's a practice and not every day is, is a good day. I mean, listen, we, I go through it. I have, I'm on a con, I'm on a constant text chain with actor mom friends of mine who we go through it. I mean, it's, it's tough and we, we keep ourselves in check though, you know? Mm -hmm. I have a good, I have a good group of, of friends who we, we can be woo woo together. <laughs> well, and I think that's really important that you yeah. do need that support system. Oh because, yeah. Uh, you got it going on girl. I mean, you got a lot happening. And once this yeah. TV series is picked up and you're, you're doing the showrunner thing and you're in charge of all of it and you're writing it and you're acting in it and you're producing it and you're dealing with the suits. <laughs> the networks. Yeah. And, and I'm going to have 16, 20 hour days where I'm not going to be with my family. And, and that's, I feel like this sort of waiting period is me preparing for all of that as well. Well, not only that, and also spending time with your daughter. I mean, your son's it, exactly. old enough that he's in school, but your daughter's going to be in school before long, and that's you right. can't get those years back. Right. So it's, it's, I think, what you've done a masterful job of doing, which is accepting where you are, knowing it's unfolding perfectly, know, knowing you're being led, you're being inspired, you are, there's a bigger picture here, and it's right. all unfolding perfectly. Right. So. And then I have people like you in my life who remind me of that every now and then when I feel frustrated. <laughs> oh, wow. Thanks. Well, what a treat to get some of your time in your crazy schedule to spend with me. And oh, no, I'm so everybody that's very listening. honored. I'm absolutely honored. I, I just love you. And I think you're doing amazing things in this world. I'm so honored to be a part of your life in any capacity. Well, ditto right back at you, babe. So thanks so much, everybody. We'll, we'll be back next week with a live show and have a terrific weekend and a terrific week. And until next time, see you soon. Bye. Thanks for joining us. Be sure to follow Julie on Twitter at Ask Julie Ryan and like her on Facebook at Ask Julie Ryan. For information on how you can ask Julie your question, 
please visit AskJulieRyan.com.